In this video, we'll be discussing the concept of unsupervised learning. In our previous video on supervised learning, we talked about how supervised learning occurs when data in our training set is labeled. Contrast to supervised learning, unsupervised learning occurs when the data in our training set is not labeled. With unsupervised learning, each piece of data passed to our model during training is solely an unlabeled input object or sample. There's no corresponding label that's paired with the sample. But if the data isn't labeled, then how is the model learning? How is it evaluating itself to understand how well it's performing? Well, first, let's go ahead and touch on the fact that with unsupervised learning, since the model is unaware of the labels for the training data, there's no way for it to measure its accuracy. So accuracy is not a metric that we analyze with unsupervised learning. Now, essentially, with unsupervised learning, the model is going to be given the unlabeled data set, and it's going to attempt to learn some type of structure from the data and will extract the useful information or features from it. It's going to be learning how to create a mapping from given inputs to particular outputs based on what it's learning about the structure of this data without any labels. Let's make this idea solid with some examples. One of the most popular applications of unsupervised learning is through the use of clustering algorithms. Sticking with our example from our previous video on supervised learning, let's say we have the height and weight data for a particular age group of males and females, but this time we don't have the labels for this data. So any given sample from this data would just be a tuple consisting of one person's height and weight, but there would be no associated label telling us whether this person was a male or female. Now, a clustering algorithm could analyze this data and start to learn the structure of it even though it's not labeled. Through learning the structure, it can start to cluster the data into groups. We could imagine that if we were to plot this height and weight data on a chart, that maybe it would look something like this, with weight on the x-axis and height on the y-axis. Now there's nothing explicitly telling us here the labels for this data, but we can see that there are two pretty distinct clusters here, and so we could infer that perhaps this clustering is occurring based on whether these individuals are male or female. So one of these clusters may be made up predominantly of females, while the other is predominantly male. So clustering is one area that makes use of unsupervised learning. Let's look at another. Unsupervised learning is also used by autoencoders. In the most basic terms, an autoencoder is an artificial neural network that takes in input and then outputs a reconstruction of this input. Hmm, so based on everything we've learned so far on neural networks, this seems pretty strange, but let's explain further by using an example. The example we'll use is written in a blog by Francois Chalet, the author of Keras, the neural network API that we've used in several videos. So say we have a set of images of handwritten digits and we want to pass them through to an autoencoder. Now remember, an autoencoder is just a neural network. So what this particular neural network will do with an individual sample from this data set is that it will take in this image of a digit and then it will encode the image and then at the end of the network it will decode the image and output the decoded reconstructed version of the original image. The goal here is for the reconstructed image to be as close as possible to the original image. So how can we even measure how well this autoencoder is doing at reconstructing the original image without doing something like visually inspecting it? Well, we can think of the loss function for this autoencoder as measuring how similar the reconstructed version of the image is to the original version. So the more similar the reconstructed image is to the original one, the lower the loss. And since this is an artificial neural network after all, we'll still be using some variation of SGD during training, and so we'll still have the same objective of minimizing our loss function. So during training then, our model is incentivized to make the reconstructed images closer and closer to the originals. All right, so hopefully we have the very basic idea of an autoencoder down, but what would be the application for doing this? Why would we just want to reconstruct input? Well, one application for this is to denoise images. Once the model has been trained, it will then be able to accept other similar images that may have a lot of noise surrounding them, and it will then be able to extract the underlying meaningful features of the images and reconstruct them without the noise. If you'd like to read up further on the idea of autoencoders, I've linked to the blog I mentioned in the description. Also, in the future, we may do a video that goes further into the topic of autoencoders and may get into the code as well. Let me know what you all think and if this would be of interest to you. So I hope now you understand the concept of unsupervised learning as well as some of the applications that make use of this type of learning, like clustering algorithms and autoencoders. 
and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. Thanks for watching.